So let's start. We'll start with. Uh, okay. Uh, which one first? Oh well. Wow. <laughs> uh, we will. We'll start with this one. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you want to record. You want to record? Yep. Okay. All right. So very good. I'll try and I'll try and whiz through it. Um, I don't know where where these are going, but it's just how how I how, how I'm observing what we're doing at the minute. Um, so the the way that we're structured at the minute is is with each of these tasks, um, we've split it down into four tasks, which is great. All supported by common teams, um, the, the communications, marketing, legal, etc., all that sort of stuff. And the the next submission or the next milestone is April the sixteenth. I think it's the sixteenth. Kaggle submission deadline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, because that's not very far away, um, and everybody seems to be making progress already, you're probably right about just maintaining that structure and sticking with it. And so what I expect will probably happen is that each of these, each of these teams will create their own submission um, based on their own, their own data or whatever. I know there is some cross-pollination going on, but largely it's vertical. So we're getting mm -hmm. vertically integrated, say. And so um, each of these will you know, present something in their own way. Um, the benefits of, 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 of doing it like this uh, one we don't have to rip everything up for the time being because it's it's working organically so there's no problem the other thing is um, less so on the data sets more so the further up that you go you get four examples of eg how we curate data how we do nlp um four ways of doing everything so um and uh, what what we can then do um in order to to for, for, to meet the June Kaggle competition, is pick and choose the best bits out of those four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe one team's doing it great, maybe another team really struggled, and you know, and so um, we start this after after the April sixteenth deadline. Um, this sort of it slowly, slowly, sort of slow organic growth again, like we were talking about. Um, so where before we were just working, we were perhaps working with the SMEs, um, doing everything really manually, largely, and presenting something on risk factors and presenting something on VTs and geography and ties, whatever. Maybe the uh, June objective is we provide something that allows any SME to query themselves. Um, That's actually a very important piece. And I think, yeah, in June, we should already have a structure this, that supports that outside interaction. Sure. Because that's not going to be Kaggle anymore. No, no, no. Um, so, um, yeah, this is, this is how I see sort of where we are maybe at the start or as, as we submit in June. Um, or as we, no, that's, that's wrong. Um, as we come out of April. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick each of these good bits, bad bits, blah, blah, blah. Um, and in order to integrate those, we keep, this is, again, this is just an idea. It's just how I'm putting it down, how I see it. Um, this, all, this all stays the same. But each of the teams stays because their subject matter, they, the, the, the team members will become more expert in their own field. Um, as time goes on and so there's no point in really ripping that up but at this point yeah we'll have a we'll have had a little bit of cross-pollination but maybe at this point we need in order to start picking the good and disregarding the bad maybe we need a central data to add, and again data nlp ml I, these might be completely phony teams but you, you get the you know it's the abstract idea yeah i get it it's up, it's up for the it's up for grabs as to how you actually structure it um and so then what you end up you've got you've got your four you've got your four team leads 
um, or task leads, say, and then we also have four team leads. Mm -hmm. um, so these guys can drop people in here or here uh, on each task as they see fit, and they will know exactly the requirements of each of each of each task. So, and what it also means is that we're not going to be duplicating work. Different team, different tasks aren't going to be doing the same thing, but in different ways. Um, just, just a thought. Um, so effectively, if, if someone's in, in this position, then they'll be sort of not reporting, but you get the idea. They're reporting mm -hmm. to the uh, machine learning lead and the task lead. Um, so you get this web anyway, but you end up with sort of four. It, it's some eight. weird form of graph, like the one that doesn't exist yet in a typical mm. corporate or research institution because mm. it's not vertical, it's not horizontal, it's emergent. And I actually had a call with a guy today that, um, you know, I, I've talked to him like a year ago and I just reconnected to talk about this specifically because he ran big companies and he has a bunch of experience. And he told me that, you know, what I'm describing is more like an ant high structure and apparently what he told me there is a thing where there is a very finite balance between types of like worker ants and whatever ants and they're just flexible by nature to pick whatever like role they need and mm. they gravitate towards that like chemically or, or something and yeah. it, it resonated so much because that's what we're seeing organically happening and that's what i think we are describing here mm -hmm. so th there are a lot of benefits to doing this uh, as i've described the main one is that we get a, we learn we learn four times as much about nlp if we're doing it in in isolation um and then we can pick and choose and we end up here but i think i do think this this sort of matrix will probably be quite important anyway I agree. that's what I, I see about the structure so you've got at least eight leads <coughs> plus the leads for each of these supporting structures and just because at the bottom obviously it doesn't mean that i neglect them anyway but they're less um uh, or perhaps more easily to find. i don't know but you you get what i'm saying yep. okay so that's a foundational so layer yes yes okay so the next thing i was looking at was I, I, i've seen all the uh, i've called this the people problem so i've seen all of the discussions about people and onboarding and the rest of it. Um, and this is how I see it. So we've got another, we've got another matrix. There are people that want to help um, or, or whether people want to help is on the Y and whether they can help is on the, on the X. Um, fairly simple, straightforward, mm -hmm. should be easy to understand. The people that don't want to help and can't help, we definitely don't care about. Mm -hmm. the people that don't want to help but can help well maybe if we think it's worthwhile we have to try and convince them to help mm -hmm. maybe it might not be worthwhile that's like all. drafting people versus volunteers yeah yeah, yeah well it's, it's yeah uh, or, or maybe it's a marketing and maybe it's getting people uh, changing perceptions about what we're doing who knows but i don't think it's important um i don't really think either of these are important um uh, the people that want to help but can't help right now, um, maybe they'll be able to help in the future. Um, maybe they've got a skill that we just simply don't need. Uh, and so uh, I suggest we keep contact details or we take another approach and um, make work for them. Engage okay. them. Engage with them. We might not have thought about something that they can do that actually, you know, that'd be really helpful. Which is actually happening. Like there are a bunch of people that really want to have uh, help, can't help with their existing uh, skill set, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden they become these polymath that are learning all kinds of different stuff they never done, and it's yes. actually fun. Mm -hmm. It's working. So maybe I've I've downplayed that one a little bit, and maybe that's a maybe that's a, a pretty key area. 
Um, and then finally, we've got the people that want to help, that can help. Focus attention here, I've put, but maybe that's maybe that's um, not the best place. Nevertheless, and so, I think actually, like not to overcomplicate this uh, very simple two-dimensional kind of uh, graph, you know, like this makes sense, and I think that's the simplified version. But I think there is an extra z uh, z d dimension, which is awareness. Okay. And that one is is adding an extra you know uh, variable obviously but it's also super important because to give you an example with uh, the podcast guy that um, i talked to today this is the person that wants to help this is the person that can help but mm -hmm. he was simply not aware that he can help maybe maybe this is more important than um then i'm then i'm letting on i've broken down nevertheless i've yeah let's go i've broken down this this top right um quadrant here okay and so we can break that down so that exists in here as well but just to add a, mm -hmm. a little layer of, of granularity the, then and this is where we get down to the crux of what you and mark were talking about there are people that know how to help and then we've got engagement as well along the bottom Mm -hmm. Okay, so engagement and whether they know how to help. And if we do something similar again over here, mm -hmm. the people that don't know how to help and won't engage, again, if we think it's worth it, we can contact them directly and put extra effort in. And maybe because they don't want to engage, maybe they're a bit shy, maybe, you know, that this is completely you know, they're not used to it, maybe they don't have the confidence that others do, maybe offer them a buddy, perhaps, you know, a, look, stick with this one single person, like, this is your guide, like, maybe, again, I don't know whether this section is really that important, um, I said that about the last chart that we looked at, and it turned out that, you know, maybe that, that it was important, so, nevertheless. I think um, it makes sense, I think there are different flavors to it, but I agree that we can uh, kind of, like, you know remove focus from this quadrant yeah. mm -hmm. then there are people that don't know um how to engage but they will engage they're fairly easy to deal with again you just direct them straight to a team um and they'll be instructed how to help quite simply mm -hmm. um the the folks that know know how to help but won't engage now this is so this is what we're calling active at, at the minute and these are the ones that we're calling the silent silent types mm -hmm. um it's important that we that the actives that we don't we need to not um overestimate the actives um if we overestimate the people that are active, then we will necessarily try and assign work, well, we'll create work thinking that we've got a massive you know, resource when we haven't. Um, so it's important that this, this one is accurate um, to some extent and how we do that, I don't know. Um, and when it comes to the silent group, um, leave them to it or try and engage with them. Um, but they're gonna be doing stuff in the background that maybe we don't have, maybe we don't know about, if, you know. Um, is that a problem? I don't know. Um, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a function of mm -hmm. finding the most relevant uh, engagement for them, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is like, I've tried it multiple times. For example, there was a need mm -hmm. for a GitHub person I basically filtered people by Git or like Git related, like AWS cloud, uh, full stack and whatnot. Mm. And I just simply sent an email and I got three responses from mm -hmm. 20 people. And mm -hmm. I think because there was a relevancy function and a very specific ask and, uh, you know, fit, they mm -hmm. engaged and actually accomplished something. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing happened was R. Uh, help. I sent out the exact same email to people that listed out R and statistics and yeah. I got responses and they helped. 
and they mm -hmm. actually became parts of the teams. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really a function of relevancy, availability, and the smallest commitment you can imagine for this person. Yes. Because if you tell them, hey, do you want to be team leader? Or, hey, do you want to build out the whole infrastructure? They're mm -hmm. going to say, uh, not really. I don't no. have any time no. for that. But if you tell them this is like this is what we need and this is so simple that it's going to mm -hmm. take 10 minutes of your time, the natural yes. reaction will be, what do you mean? Like, I, I can do it easily. Like, this is, this is super simple. And they will engage. Mm -hmm. Little wins. Mm -hmm. Little wins. Um, so anyway, this, this, was, this was kind of a, a, a sort of... This is huge. Me, it was visualizing just where what you guys were talking about. You know, you can put this into a truth matrix. Um, and hey, presto, you know. But anyway, um, it's it's worth some. It's worth considering and and, and maybe looking at because we've got such an influx and we're not really trying that hard. Um, uh, do we need to put time and resource into getting people in or not? But I'll leave that for you and Mark um, and, and the rest of the crew. But that's how I, I think visualize it's it. It's a good point of uh, discussing if we're prepared to handle each of these because yeah. essentially we're blessed that we only have 300 people that are super mm. active. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm saying we're blessed just because we're not ready to handle yeah, yeah, yeah. 800 people that are constantly sure. messaging, you know, all of us and demanding to, to help, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I think the, the sooner we figure out a process to handle at least like one quadrant and then mm -hmm. expand to the second one, then expand yes. to the next one, the better yep. it is. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, the active, the active lot, just leave them to it, you know, mm -hmm. let, let them get on with it. You can, and arguably the same with the silent lot. You know, if they're, they're making progress, if, if, if you only had these people, things would get done, but just a lot of it, you wouldn't know was coming, um, which is a better way around than um, not knowing way you, that you've got a problem um or a lack of resource so um how does that feed into uh, this was what i didn't finish unfortunately i didn't get time to uh, to deal with this uh, or to create it terribly well nevertheless so onboarding um i think it's a little bit confusing you need one central hub one one path for every single person if you can now there are obviously a lot a lot of accept exceptions and you'll know better than better than I just how that happens but say people come through the web um, or through email just for your context before last week we actually last week we had multiple channels and we realized right. that we couldn't handle that we didn't know who was joining and all of that so we just yeah. made it so people go through one single form yeah 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 so they join through the email, um, and again, these these slides are the ones that I was talking about yesterday that need to be super simple, super clear, and offer no ambiguity about what to do next, who to do, mm -hmm. see everything simple. Um, so we'll come to these in a minute and <coughs> this sort of out, outside path. Um, join through the email, send them the onboarding slides, Super simple again, do they know which skill? Um, this isn't quite right actually. Um, uh, okay, okay, okay. Something, something's not quite right here. Uh, if they don't know, forgive me, if, if they don't know which skill um, and they don't know which task, then they need to come over here to the onboard an onboarding Slack channel. I think I've seen what in, in when people post in general, the general channel, they don't get seen to for a good few hours um, because people are looking at the very latest, um, the, the, the latest posts and not going back through. And of course, why would we? Because we've got such a, you know, everything's going on. And so I think it's important that we direct them to one single place and we must engage with them as soon as possible. So maybe you've got three or four people who, as a side uh, part to whatever they're doing, just say hello. 
you know, the very first thing, just say hello. Um, and it's easy, you can you can look through the, the the onboarding channel, look, has this one got a reply? Yes, has it got a reply? Yes, has it got a reply? Yes, has it got a reply? No, right, bang, there you go, you're straight in. But I think that's really important. Um, I agree. Think, to bring you a little bit more context, sorry for interrupting you. Right. Basically, uh, you are the probably the fifth person that is suggesting something like that. Mm -hmm. The reason why it didn't work first time, and we tried it last week, yeah. We created yep. onboarding channel and mm -hmm. it just didn't work. And I mm -hmm. think the reason why it didn't work is because of the infrastructure that we're using, which is Slack. And yep. because first of all, the first thing that people will gravitate to is the channels that they're automatically added to, right? So mm -hmm. general is the one that is abstract enough to engage. Mm -hmm. And because we're not able to create a channel which uh, gets people uh, added to automatically. Mm -hmm. And here's a weird thing. It was possible to create such channels when the Slack was new account. Like uh, last week, I think the first three days, Slack allowed us to create such channels. There was a mm -hmm. checkbox that said, add every, every new member to this channel. And mm -hmm. we've created a couple of these, but since then we're not able to do the same thing. I think that's what's preventing us. I just generated an idea how to overcome that. Mm -hmm. I think the old channels that we've created at the very beginning can be renamed and repurposed. Mm -hmm. So we can try that. I'm not sure if that's possible, but we can take mm -hmm. channels that uh, became dead that mm -hmm. still have this kind of feature mm -hmm. and try it there. Mm -hmm. because I, mean, I agree that general is not the best place and it's getting lost and no. that's a very big problem uh, except we couldn't solve it so let's see if we can solve it after this call I mean, the question is whether you direct everybody to only the onboarding slack channel but again i think you inhibit if you did that if you force them into one channel and they have to wait you know, you, you, you're losing that enthusiasm and you're inhibiting those that really do want to engage and will just go out and just, you know. So it's a difficult one. It's a really fine balance. Um, yeah, because no, no. the more like requirements you add, like, hey, go to this channel, not that yes. channel, is yeah. going to add friction and is going to hurt the, yeah. the conversion from, you know, engaged yes. person to the disengaged one. Yeah. Uh, you get the idea anyway so do you know which skill and it depends i don't know which order you do these in and it, i don't mean this is super simple and I, I don't mean to pretend you know that i'm not i'm not trying to explain it to you i know you understand the um, other people that are watching this video will benefit a lot from you explaining it so yes okay uh, um, but either way the, the 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 sim it needs to be simple it, it can't be com it doesn't need to, if it's any more complicated than do you know which skill you have is it machine learning is it NLP then go to the team coordinator so if we're talking back to my other uh, structure thing where these are teams say uh, along here and these are the task leaders. You know, um, do you know which team you go to the team coordinator? If there's a particular task that you're interested in, if you're a cardiologist, if, if you're, you know, you, you're going to go to the risk factors, say. Um, SMEs are a separate subject, but um, if, 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 if it's task related, go to, you, go to your task coordinator, otherwise the team coordinator. But it's super simple. And this is what I want to try and get over in, in that onboarding, that set of onboarding slides. Um, Okay, so that does leave out a lot of people. Um, it leaves out the people that are not going to join through email and are going to jump straight into, sorry, I don't know how I'm about, do I'm about. Which shouldn't be possible in theory right. anymore. Okay. okay, that's fine. Um, I think it's still happening because okay. of, um, for example, people can directly invite people to Slack. Mm -hmm. bypassing that not slack i'm talking about github github i think the same thing can happen okay but the, the next 
exactly. I, I don't think that's even like 2%. So okay, we can disregard right. that. So let's, let's say then that if, I, if my rubble was bigger, I could get rid of all this, but never mind. Um, then how do you want to, I, I, I presume that you want to still allow people to come from the onboarding slide straight into GitHub and Trello and Slack, um, rather than having to go through the team and over here, or through the task and over here. Um, again, I think the problem with going through the team or through the task is you add all these layers of complexity again, which are just, again, they're going to inhibit and stifle creativity. So I, I don't think, so I think you need, you need this channel available from the onboarding slide. So the last slide is, look, go to GitHub, go to Trello or, well, or speak to you. I think to you. it's, first of all, I think it's beneficial to have that pass. Uh, mm -hmm. path, but I think it's also the question of us asking the right question to be able mm -hmm. to help person assess mm -hmm. if they're able to to go that path, mm -hmm. which I think is super complex. Mm -hmm. And I, from what I've seen so far, mm -hmm. it, it either has to be a very like obvious thing, for example, mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. there is MD physician that join that joins Slack. Mm -hmm. He naturally already knows where where to go. Like he wanted mm -hmm. to go to a risk factors team, mm -hmm. and, but he is he's quite old. He doesn't mm -hmm. have experience with any of the tech tools, and mm -hmm. his first natural reaction was just uh, calling me yes. because I was the person that routed him. Okay, yeah. you want to go risk factors? Here's mm -hmm. Maya. Um, I'll connect you to have a quick call. So mm -hmm. it kind of like even if they know where they want to go, yeah, they still need that human connection. So that's a, a little bit of a separate um, thing I was I was going to say. So what we're saying is then we want to encourage in the onboarding slides to talk to team and task coordinators. But what we don't want to do is put off those people that don't want to talk, that just want to get on, let them go. Um, yeah. But we should encourage talking to coordinators. And the separate issue entirely is SMEs and medical professionals. And all of this, all of this clever stuff, all of this is all about, largely about programmers and data visualization, all this sort of stuff. When the real, real, real those four real things that you've nuggets. listed out in at the yeah. top, yeah. But the real golden nuggets are these people that fall into that group, and I maybe some of them won't go anywhere near Slack, they won't go anywhere near Trello, and they especially won't go anywhere near GitHub. Some of them might. Um, they might just want to talk over email. They might just want to talk. Um, uh, uh, they might just want to talk on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and so these guys, I think, need a dedicated liaison. You know, there needs to be one contact for these guys that is personable, um, has some understanding of their position, and also can maintain communication with them uh, uh, and help get their in, uh, input into what we're doing because... I said they are the they're, 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 they're the, the, the geese that are going to lay the golden eggs for us, um, and they maybe fall out of this entire workflow, you know, completely. Um, uh, but nevertheless, a few things to think about. So, lastly, I don't think we'll be too long. Is um, the presentation now? I haven't done as much on this either. I've at least got down a little bit of a structure. And this will be useful for Anson. Anson um, has added me to a task on uh, the Corona Y video promo, the Why Are We Here video promo. Um, I think this will feed into that. I just wanted to run it, um, run the structure by, I'd, ha I'd hope to have something um, uh, a bit more firm. Um, but nevertheless, similar to what I showed you yesterday, the very basics. Thanks for coming. We know why you're here. You um, you want to you want to fight COVID nineteen. Uh, you're probably a geek. Um, you want to save lives. Uh, you enjoy this sort of stuff. Great. You know, 
if you don't know about what a, a, a naive Bayes classifier is, or you don't know what, I don't know, RNA polymerase is, or you, 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 know, you don't know what power BI is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your contribution is super, super important. So that's what this slide's about. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. Why we're here, so this is that whole thing, oh, we're here because of Kaggle. Ah, wait, yeah, but we're not really here because of Kaggle. Um, future outbreaks. Um, explain exactly, or in, as simply as we can, just oh, what it is um, what it is that we're doing, which is some sort of, however we explain it, curating knowledge for medical professionals. What does that look like? And again, this might not be on one slide. Um, the Kaggle competition, explain a little bit about it because those are the next two key milestones, um, whether we like it or not. Uh, we do need to keep the end in mind, but that is, you know, the, the, the goals that we can um, at least focus on. If we don't have a target, um, then we don't know where we're going. And there won't be the end goal, but at least they are stepping stones. And so they'll provide us with some, some focus. Um, if you don't know what Kaggle is, don't, don't worry about it. There are four tasks. We've got to answer these things, two deadlines. The first output is answer the question, which is what does the literature, literature report about X? Um, it's not answering what it means. It's not answering you know, what the risk factors actually are. It's only answering what the literature reports. Super that might, important emphasis. Very important. And that might be like we're doing in team risk, uh, risk at the minute, uh, task risk, is it's fairly manual. Um, but we're only a week and a half away from the first deadline. So does that matter? Not particularly. If we're using the data set and we're using it with, you know, uh, um, doing some uh, programmed extraction, um, and then we're manually looking at, you know, uh, providing these data sets to an SME, um, and we're crossing up, crossing ones off that aren't relevant and ticking ones that are, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter at all how we're answering the question of what the literature reports, because we're getting familiar with the data to begin with. In fact, the more manual we go, the more knowledge that we're gonna have personally and, and, and as tasks about the data that we're actually working with. 100%, so it, it's actually not about building some automated pipeline, yeah. but mm. touching the knowledge base as, mm. as much as possible to extent of how we can as non-experts. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then, so output two is some fully fledged, fully fledged rapid prototype, perhaps a uh, minimum viable product of something where an SME can come along and put in a risk factor a drug and a location and from our data set it provides them curated knowledge claims uh, that are judged on how many citations they've had what the relevance is to those three characteristics maybe there are more characteristics it doesn't matter um, but I think the second goal i.e., for the June submission should be something whereby we don't have to dictate whether it's whether they're looking for a risk factor or that they can only look for VTs, or they can only look for TIS, or they can only look for G. They can look for anything, any keyword. You want to search for green eyes, go for it. I don't think there'll be any relevance, but you might want to look for green eyes. Who cares? Um, so I think. And ideally, I think, you would build out something, some MVP that resembles what we've done manually in terms of these engrams, bigrams, you know, all of these pieces. This is something else I was going to talk to you about. Um, or at least maybe someone can create a task off the back of this, but can we, can we get a workflow from some of our medical guys, ask them exactly if they were to look for risk factors, how would they do it now? Um, it might be that they say, oh, it takes us two weeks to scan, you know, to, to, to look through 50 documents or whatever, 50 papers, and we look for this and we look for that. But if we understand their workflow from, um, what they what they what they start the search for and when they stop their search mapping out that process i think is going to be really important because we, what we want to do is one we need to we want to cut cut that out and two we need to understand the mechanisms by which they get there so that we can model largely something the same um anyway 
And I think we've actually touched on it a couple of times. There was this call about the outputs of Kaggle submissions. Mm -hmm. And there was a call with Mark and this um, guy, Lukas, I think. And what they talked about is basically, okay, there is this meta analysis that is happening with the experts reading papers. And what they're looking for essentially is not the numbers, not the specific sentences, but stuff in between the lines. And that's what we're trying to mimic right now. And it's amazing that no one has done it before. I mean, it mm -hmm. makes sense, but it's amazing that there is this gap. And I, I think we are solving that gap and we should be able to present some MVP for that. Okay, yeah, I mean, it seems, it's, yeah, super important, but those are the two outputs that I'd, I'd like to communicate as simply as I can, and, and again, on, on this slide. Or, yep. um, uh, um, just to give, just to give folks an idea, a simplified idea of how the structure is now and how it might be um, between um, deadline one and deadline two, I'd like to put in something similar to what I showed earlier. Um, I appreciate that that might not be ideal. We might not want to do that. It was, you know, dropping something like this onto it. Um, maybe not so full, but you can have a think about that one. But I, I think it's important to give them an idea of what's actually going on and where we're going to maybe. Um, you can have a think about that one um, because I don't want to be too, I don't want to, yeah, I, I don't want to anticipate what it is that might not happen um, or presume how. Or may happen in a different way. Yes. So I think at least explaining the structure, perhaps not this one, um, but perhaps give them an idea of just how we're structured at the minute and indicate that yes, there is some cross pollination already and you know, um, but the important um, objection to kind of address whenever uh, people see this structure, and uh, I've tried to address it, you know, manually jumping into uh, conversations whenever people are asking, hey, aren't we doing the same NLP stuff across mm -hmm. different tasks? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, yes, we are. And we mm -hmm. kind of appreciate the redundancy as a way for us to combine brute force and creativity within yes. these four channels. So we get four examples of how to do it and get to pick the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's perfect. So I'll maybe, I'll maybe put this in and leave out the, mm -hmm. the old where we're going to go, but this is largely where we are. I might need some help with just whether we include these groups, I don't know. But, I think this looks great. Um, so something like that. Um, so that will go here. We'll get rid of the horizontal structure, not a problem. Where do you fit in? Um, where is it? Come on. Um, effectively, what I was going to do on a slide was say, look, oh, this is you. And then on week one, you're here. And then, you know, the day after you think, sod it, I'm going to machine learning um, to help out there. Um, and maybe I'll come back over to this task. And maybe I'll just look at both of these. You know, just be free, you know, you know, free as a bird, man. Just, 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 just fly, you know, anyway. Um, ah, oh, you're not seeing the bloody slides, are you? Ah. Oh, you were so, uh, showing some presentation already? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Right. Let's quickly okay. run through these. Yeah, we'll, we'll quickly go back. Right, how do I... Um, I had uh, a hypothesis that you you already have some slides, but I was like, hey, does he? <laughs> Got it. Hey, gutted. Right. Can you see it now? <laughs> right, game, game changer. Okay, so back to where we were. Look, yeah, welcome. Thanks for coming. You know why you're here. Fight COVID. Save, save lives. You're probably a geek, but it's okay. We're all geeks, blah, 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 blah. Um, you don't know what everything is, why we're here. This is what we're talking about. Um, the output, um, the two two deadlines, um, and what we're going to try and achieve. Where do you fit in? Move wherever you see fit. And then what next? Um, and I don't think it needs to be any more complicated than this. 
I think having a lot of information, maybe maybe I've on something on here where to go if you want to look into it more, but otherwise just get straight on, contact coordinator for this team, contact coordinator for that task, contact the SME liaison for if you're a medical person, and just go. Um, just just go. Um, and maybe in here we put in, you know, here's, here's GitHub, here's Slack, here's Trello, but please, if you can, go and chat with somebody. If you don't know which task, if you don't know which team, go to onboarding and just let somebody know you're here. Um, and leave it as simple as that. You know, it shouldn't be more than... Uh, yeah, this is the best simplified version of everything that, that is happening. And uh -huh. please, please create it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, this bit will be relevant for um, Anson and um, whoever else. Um, I've asked them to get in touch with the marketers, the creatives, the media folk. Um, I'll probably at least do the content and perhaps a script. I think this would be a lot better done with a voiceover rather than yeah. um, rather than writing. Um, I'm happy to write out the script and let those guys tweak it because they're the guys that know how to tweak it. Um, provide guidance on the visuals, at least get the concepts across and let them make it look amazing and, 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 and captivating. I agree, um, especially with the abundance of text content everywhere. I yes. mean, we're so overwhelmed scrolling our Facebook feeds, tweets yes. and all of that. It's kind of like you're... You, you are numb to mm. text content. So that's mm. why like, I think visuals plus verbal audio yes. would be amazing to help. Yes. And we'll also add an aspect of you know, human touch because mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is partially like what's, what's working. You know? There is a real mm -hmm. human connection. And mm -hmm. even though there is this weird aspect of anonymity, like, for example, if you would ask me if I know what you're doing in, in your life, like what's mm -hmm. your profession or mm -hmm. something, I have no idea. The mm -hmm. only thing I know that you're amazing at what you're currently creating. Mm -hmm. And it, that's it. it. It's strange. You, you, you know, all, all of the things that make you, um, that, that make you different, not different, all the things that are not common, just they don't matter. No, nobody's even asked, you know, it's the only thing that's important here is what we've got in common. And it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's fascinating. You know, you, you're talking to people on Slack. It's just, it just, how does then that Suddenly you discover that, you know, there is this uh, professor of uh, high energy and something that mm -hmm. is working on the antimatter imbalance mm -hmm. and got a, a million dollar grant from mm -hmm. the department mm -hmm. of s something. And mm -hmm. he's working on the vaccines task. And you're like, yes. wow, like what's yeah, happening? Yeah, 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 or, yeah. you know, the other day I, I actually, something prom prompted me to learn like what Mark is doing in his mm -hmm. you know professional life and i read through it and i was like wow but mm -hmm. like i i never even like knew or like obviously i wanted to know i didn't have time to uh, research that but simply like that wasn't a priority like it mm -hmm. doesn't matter like we're mm -hmm. we're all we were so trained by the current society to be so specialized and you know work within very well defined thing but now it's so wide open and mm -hmm. we kind of like we are human again mm -hmm. it's, it's a super organism it, 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 it's like we you know um we're all sat behind computers we're just we're just a collection of brains you know just yeah know, leveraging leveraging networks collective and, intelligence this high yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but um so next actions anyway um I'm going to continue with this uh, onboarding set of slides. Again, I don't think there'll be many. Maybe by tomorrow or the day after, hopefully tomorrow evening, I'll get some time to, to, to do something. I'll touch base with the video people, uh, like a sauna, I think it's something like that, um, and Anson, and keep on with them. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think it'd be worth 
uh, if, if we're not already having someone dedicated to working with the SMEs and, and making sure we know who they are and keep keeping them. We used them to have, there is this close. Natalie person that is a journalist that works with uh, medical mm -hmm. experts and she mm -hmm. was uh, actually pretty good and personable mm -hmm. and exactly what you mentioned. We mm -hmm. have to re-engage her because I think something broke within the process mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. she um, lost her ability to dedicate herself. We have mm -hmm. to touch base on that, but she was perfect to my understanding. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, All right. That, that the thing. Um, yeah. And I think everything's, everything else is just happening. Um, I think it's just happening, but I think, yeah, keeping the vertical structure just until we get, or at least until we get the deadline, the first deadline is actually, when you think about it, really, really, really important. Yep. Um, so I've come full circle on that one. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's amazing. Um, there you go. All right. This is, a, this is a huge knowledge bomb. So I'm going to record this, annotate that's it, great. and uh, throw it in as many relevant channels as I can, because awesome. this is super helpful, even for people that were here from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I truly believe the visuals make it very eye-opening, especially mm -hmm. the quadrants and the, mm -hmm. the vertical versus horizontal. So mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, man. Thanks a lot. Cool. Right, well, you have a good night, Arthur. All, All right. <laughs> have a good night. Yeah. I know enough about you to know that you um, it's not night time where you are. <laughs> exactly. That's what matters. Cheers. Bye.